Today I'm going to show you how to make twisted clay beads to create this necklace and earrings out of Macon's clay and this great Marsala tone to match the 2015 Pantone color of the year. To get started, we're going to open our package of Macon's Clay. This is the 60 gram package of their color Merlot from their Vineyard Tones collection. And these great 60 gram packages have a Ziploc inside, which is perfect for storing the clay while you're working with the. It's wrapped in two packages. There's an outer wrap, which you can just cut off and remove, and then an inner sort of cellophane wrap that is taped on. I've just cut that tape off. One tip is sometimes if you roll it in your hands a bit, it will help the clay release from that cellophane if you have a problem with that. Sometimes it sticks, sometimes it doesn't. But let me find my opening here. Oh, I missed a tape. And then we're going to go ahead and remove our clay from the package. You can tell your clay is nice and fresh when it does stick a little bit to your package and it should be very soft and ready to use right out of the package. There's no need to condition it first. To roll our clay, we're going to use the Makin's Professional Ultimate Clay Machine. This machine has nine different thickness settings and it's non-stick, which makes it super easy to use with Makin's Clay and any brand of polymer clay. Let me get it set up and we'll go ahead and roll our clay. I flattened my clay out just a bit and I'm going to start with a number one on the clay machine, which is the thickest setting. Now, the clay machine does come with a clamp to hold it in place on your work surface, but because I don't have that clamp in place here, I'm going to hold the machine underneath as I roll, as you'll see. So we start with a one, and it rolls right through. And then I'm going to jump it to a two. And a three. And then I'm going to jump up to a five. And my final roll is a six. Now one thing, once you start to roll it, your clay will get longer and longer. I find it helpful to cut the clay in half when you're working for this type of project and it makes it a little easier to handle. So now we've got our six. It's beautiful and smooth and it's a little less than an eighth of an inch thick for those of you who may be hand rolling. Let me roll this second piece. And now we're ready to stamp and start making our beads. Makins does make a wide assortment of texture sheets you can use to texture your clay, or another technique I like to do is to use a rubber stamp. This is one of Judy Kin's Bolio stamps, and this one is called Rough Lines. And these Bolios have got a, a pattern on both sides, so they're really handy stamps. To texture our clay to make our beads, I started at one side, and I'm going to press that stamp into the clay. I did not ink it first, I'm just transferring the impressed image is all. And then I'm going to roll it and I'm going to put the second image right next to that first one. And then I just continue along the entire length of the clay, alternating between the two patterns. So then you would do that on both pieces. Once you've gone ahead and stamped your clay to add the texture, and I've done both pieces, it's time to cut our strips to make our rolled beads. And to do that, um, I'm working on a non-stick self-healing mat. This is the multi-mat from Kelly Craft. Um, it's got pre-measured marks, which also makes it easy to figure out what size you want your pieces. And I'm going to cut half-inch strips, just using a ruler, and my multi-mat is the guide. Line up that mark. And take my craft knife and cut my strips. Oops. Be 
and you continue doing that until you have all of your clay cut into the strips. And then we're going to roll them. To make our rolled beads, I'm using a bamboo skewer as the form. And I take one of my little half inch strips and just press the end of it a bit to help it stick to that wood just to get things started. And then rotate the skewer and wrap the clay. all the way around. Now I'm not pressing the clay against the skewer because I want it to remain loose. I'm just making a coil like that. And I just picked up the next piece and just added it and continued rolling and wrapped all of my strips onto these skewers. You can either leave it on these skewers to dry, or if you don't have enough skewers, you can easily slide the clay off and just set it aside to dry. 24 hours is what it normally would take for a piece of Macon's clay to fully dry. It is a no-bake clay, it completely air dries, but thin pieces like this will dry much more quickly. Once your coiled beads are dry and you've removed them from the skewers, I'm going to cut them to the size that I want to make our pendant and earrings. I just use my scissors to do that and I cut them starting with the longest piece is about four inches and then I cut them back in half inch increments and made a total of 11 for the pendant and I made two pieces that are two inches for the earrings that we're going to make. Once I had the beads cut to the size I wanted, I wanted to add a little bit of a metallic luster to them. And to do that, I'm using Deco Arts Metallic Luster, which I absolutely love. It's a creamy um, metallic finish that comes in a different variety of different colors and can be used on almost any surface. And I just take, this is their Iced Espresso. It's like a bronze. I put a little bit on my fingertip. And I take the piece that I want to add it to, and I don't want to cover up our great um, Merlot color. So our beads are all dry, and we're ready to put our necklace and earrings together. I'm going to show you how I made the individual beads out of the coiled clay. Because Macon stays flexible, and it's also very lightweight, after it's dry, it's easy to make holes in the beads after they're dry. You don't have to do it when it's wet. I'm just taking a regular needle and I'm pushing it through the side and then right through the other side. Kind of wiggling it a little bit to make the hole in my bead. It's that simple. And then I'm adding one of these eye hooks, one of these small bronze colored beads from Connie Crystal. And I'm pushing that through the hole I made in the bead. Like that. And then I'm adding another one of these beads. I'm kind of pushing them together a little bit. I didn't want a big wide opening on the top of the bead, so I did kind of squunch them together a bit. And then going to make my little loop on the other side. You can see how it's pushing it together a little bit. So once I've got the loops on either side of my bead and I've trimmed off the excess piece of wire, it's time to connect them together to form the basic necklace. Started with the longest one in the middle and then worked out on the progressive sizes that we used. And I just connected loop to loop to hold them together. To make the dangles that I have around the center pieces, I just used a head pin with one of these large Connie Crystal beads, and then one of the medium sized bronze, and then one of the small bronze like I used to make the clay beads. Made a loop on the end of that and connected that between the two clay pieces. And I did four of those around the center beads. 
I added my chain to the end and my closure. Now you can adjust the size of the chain, whether you want your necklace to be a choker or a little hang a little bit lower, that's up to you. To make the matching earrings, I used the pieces that we had originally made for them, but they were two inches, and I decided that was a little longer than I wanted it to be. But since Macon's clay stays flexible even after it's dry, it's really easy to cut with a scissor. So I just went and knocked those back from two inches to an inch and a half. I figured out how much I wanted to cut off, and then just snipped it right off. And then I did the same process. I made a hole through the top of the bead. I added a jump ring, and then I added the same series of beads that I used around the center part of the necklace to a French wire to make each of the earrings to match our set. Now that your necklace and earrings are finished, you've got a perfect set of jewelry to wear with all the Marsala fashions that are soon to be coming out thanks to it being Pantone's 2015 color of the year. You'll be seeing that color everywhere in the stores and you've got a perfect set to wear with it. I hope you enjoyed this project. Stay tuned to the next episode of Creatively Crafty with Cindy Bison for more creative project ideas.